Every guitar synth system has its good and bad points, but they are now becoming more sophisticated. With just a little bit of programming, you can now come up with interesting combinations of sound like this. You can also now buy units, like this one, which will convert any guitar into a synth controller. Now let's look at a different concept in MIDI conversion. The synth axe. It's not quite like other guitars or even most other MIDI controllers. In fact, it's not a guitar. It doesn't produce any sound of its own. Its sole purpose is to produce MIDI information, which it does very well and in this way. There are two sets of strings. This set of string takes care of pitch. When a string makes contact with a fret, it sends a signal to the computer inside saying what the pitch of the note is. This set of strings takes care of note on, note off, velocity and loudness parameters. However, you can press on left hand trigger so that the fingerboard does all the triggering like this. You don't even need to use the strings to trigger it. You can actually use these keys here like this. Now I should also mention that it's incredibly expensive, but these things all seem to come down in price eventually. Now here's a guitarist who's been very associated with the Synthax in recent years, virtuoso guitarist Alan Holdsworth. thing came along it was just like I'd been waiting for it all my life because it was an instrument that I understood because the notes um, are where they are on the guitar so it's it will understand the language I've come to understand and translate it into one which will control synthesizers seriously well now with these guitar and bass synths we've now got three synth players in the band so let's look a bit at creating these sounds we looked at analog synths in program one so what about digital synths well FM is the most popular form of synthesis available today and it comes in the form of these DX keyboards and various offshoots like the synth module that Henry's got in his setup these synths have acquired a reputation for being hard to program but with a little knowledge you could easily start altering factory sounds to suit yourself Firstly, call up a sound, press edit, and you'll notice that the display refers you to an algorithm number. Now, algorithms are groups of digital oscillators arranged in different combinations. And just to confuse you further, these oscillators are known as operators. Now, unlike analog synths, operators are set only to produce one waveform, that's a sine wave. And the way the DX generates complex waveforms is to call some operators carriers, the bottom row of numbers on your algorithm chart, and these form the basic pitch of the sound. The other operators are called modulators, and these jangle the frequency of the carriers and change the tonal quality of the sound. So, to hear the effect that each operator has got, try switching out different ones using the operator on-off button. One on the display means it's on, and naught means off. You'll notice that if I disable operator 1, here the sound disappears. This is because using this algorithm, operator 1 is the only carrier, and without it the sound doesn't exist. Now you could try experimenting with different algorithms. You'll find that if you're after a complex, harmonically rich sound, like the one we're using here, you'll need an algorithm with plenty of modulators in it, like this one. Or if you want a simple sound like an organ, you could choose an algorithm like this one, which is made up only of carriers. Well, this probably sounds very confusing, and it will be until you try experimenting. So, get, get, get to, to it. Yes, you've guessed it, drummers have to program sounds too. And while guitar and bass synths may still be relatively rare, drum synths certainly are not.
Following a short period of disbelief, uh, electronic kits took off like wildfire. Now, some people still see them as a threat to or just a poor copy of acoustic drums, but what is undeniable is that electronics can offer the drummer a much greater variety of sounds, even to include tune sounds, as we discovered when we talked to ex-Yes and King Crimson drummer Bill Bruford. My name is Bill. I do the rhythm. Don't talk to me about melody, harmony, don't worry about that stuff. That's the keyboard player's department. I just do rhythm. <laughs> Drummers previous to electronics had considered themselves just rhythm specialists. You know. I think that's becoming a fairly luxurious point of view, and I think drummers are increasingly interesting themselves in melody and harmony. And the new technology gives you control over those things. You can be a real musician. The sounds of an acoustic drum are enormously complex. What you get with electronic drums is something else entirely. The whole idea, it seemed to me, was that they should not be the same as acoustic drums, and in as much as the manufacturer kept trying to make them like acoustic drums, I didn't, I'm not interested. I like them because they are a different instrument and require a different attitude from the drummer. Now, as Bill says, electronic kits are different instruments from acoustic drums, and you may have to adapt your playing technique accordingly. These pads are simply rubberized surfaces, and as we've seen with the uh, keyboard synthesizers before, they merely act as triggers, roughly conveying the force of the stroke to the drum synthesizer down here, which is the brain of the kit. The good news is, you don't have to hit them so hard in order to be loud, and in fact, if you do, you can damage your wrists. Um, but what... Uh, is uh, good about it is that some things are actually easier to play, like... Uh, what else? Well, they're light and they're compact, but then you need amplification. And of course it has to be pretty hefty, otherwise you can end up splattering speaker cones all over the audience. A definite plus, though, is the complete sound separation of each pad, which makes live and recording mixing a lot easier. To sum up, I'd say, the acoustic kit is unparalleled in that it's got an enormous dynamic and timbral range, which is only limited by the skill of you, the player, whereas the electronic kit uh, excels in that you can have an enormous variety of sounds all programmed into one kit set up like this. Quick look at the sounds. Now, this kit has got both analog and digital sounds, and they're all programmable. Uh, so, this snare drum, for instance, is purely a digital sample but I can drastically alter it just by turning one parameter down here. Tom 1 is totally analogue. Tom 2, a mixture of analogue and digital with some click and noise thrown in. Tom 3 is... weird. And this is only the beginning. This kit, in fact, is connected to this MIDI junction box, which does effects and sequences, which is in turn MIDI to the uh, tune percussion synthesizer down here, so that I can get all sorts of tunes and sequences and echo effects like this. But for the complete works, back to Bill Bruford.